All right, let's start the podcast that way. I just asked you how your wife was doing today. You said she's working from home, yes. handling her business. Let's show some love. What's the name of your wife's business? Uh, it's the Modern Mage Apothecary. Okay. Yep. What's going on there? Uh, so she makes spiritual candles, uh, oils, bath bombs. She does readings, tarot cards. That's dope, man. Say the name one more time. It's the Maverick Mage Apothecary. Okay. You just brought me some gifts from the spot, so I'm excited, man. Uh, I got my guy, Alan Smith, joining me here on WBH Radio. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. We started the podcast off the right way, promoting the wise business, man, so we, we, we should be all right. Um, I'm excited to have you here. And I mean that. I had a rough morning. On the way to the studio, somebody rear-ended me. Somebody hit me and just took off. I ended up crashing into two other cars and stuff. And I'm like, dang, son, like just the disregard for humanity and everything. You know what I'm saying? But just as much as I I, I can be upset, I could be thankful. You're blessed to be here. You know what I'm saying? And I was real close to canceling this joint. But I'm like, nah, man, I, I, I like to be a man of my word. And furthermore, I'm really looking forward to chatting with my God. You know what I mean? So let's let's do it. And because you're here, I'm in a better, uh, better mental space right now. May 6th. Yes, sir. My City Alumni Classic. You will be suiting up for the Kingsborough Wave. Talk to me, man. How you feeling? I feel great. I'm actually uh, nervous about it, too, because uh, actually playing like on a, a, a stage again, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's definitely a little nerve-wracking, but I'm super excited. Been uh, in the gym, trying to lose some weight. You know, yeah, getting shots up. You know, kind of. I'm taking it serious. Definitely. That's what's up. That's what. That's what we want you to do. Uh, do you remember the first time you heard about it? Yes. What? So Instagram, I saw it on your page. It had popped up, and I was like, like, what's this? Like, this is like, this is dope. Like, how do you be a part of it? And uh, I seen that uh, Rel, Darrell Robinson was playing in it, so I was like super excited, and I know. Bro, from John Jay. Yes. You guys were teammates at Kingsborough. Yeah, we actually didn't play with him. Okay. So he sat out that year, and then he played the following year when I had left. Right. So that was, like, still one of my good friends to this day. Um, I was just speaking to him recently, so hearing about it from him, and then me and Taekwon, we bought tickets. Right. We was like, we ain't going to be able to play. Let's still support. So we bought tickets, and surprisingly enough, wasn't able to even make it. But so, I was like, you know, let me buy a couple tickets. Got to always got to show love. Right. And then I ran into you in the mall, and we were talking about it. And a year later, we're here. Here we are. Here we are. First off, I I forget that you and Rel were connected. You know, Rel's gonna be playing for John Jay. That just highlights the the, the relationships throughout the city. Forget just your school throughout the city. And you guys did buy tickets last year. And I want you to know how much that meant. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, anytime you embark on an entrepreneurial endeavor, it's nerve wracking. Of course. You know what I'm saying? There's anxiety there. Are people going to respond to it? And when I saw I had your support, the support of my man Wash, I'm like, all right, maybe we might be on the right track. You know what I'm saying? So I told you when I saw you, yo, bro, if you ready to hoop, you got a spot. And this year, I sent that call out. Super thankful. <laughs> Super thankful. <laughs> but you, you deserve it, man. Um, going back to our time at Kingsboro, I was older. You know, you were the young guys coming through. And you've been solid since forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could always see that you were serious about the craft. You wanted to be the best you could be. And these are the type of individuals we run around. These are the type of stories we want to tell. So as much as you say you're super thankful, I'm thankful for you. You know what I'm saying? Because this event is for guys like you. You know what I'm saying? What um, You talk about it's a little bit nerve-wracking. What, what, what's some of your, I guess, apprehension? What's that about? Well, it's uh, definitely playing with guys that you didn't play with. Mm -hmm. So I seen the list. So you got guys from before and after. So it's like, you know, building that camaraderie. We all have, like, the common goal going to Kingsboro. Right. And uh, it's just, just playing again because now being on the side of coaching, it's like 
Hopefully some of my players will be able to make it. Definitely told them about it. So them seeing you in action and stuff like that. My family is trying to come out and support. So it's a, it's a good nerve-wracking feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for a coach. Because, you know, as coaches, we be on these kids' ass. We demand certain things. Now we got to go on that stage mm-hmm. and we got to perform. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, what's the preparation been like for you? Uh, it's been It's been tough because, you know, having a family – working, you know, you kind of get out of taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every day when I'm at work, I give myself my last hour where I'm downstairs in the weight room, lifting, trying to run run again. Then I'll get up, get up shots, working on the handle. So it's like getting it back. Like, so it's it's been fun. It's been fun, but it's, uh, it's also tough. Yo, bro, as you sit here and tell me these things, when we put this together, the Masi Alumni Classic, bringing former college basketball players uh, uh, back to play on a nice stage, this was the vision. Because life happens, take us in different directions. You know what I'm saying? We get caught up in work and we get caught up in the family. We sometimes forget about ourselves. 100%. You know what I'm saying? And this is a little motivation to, to get back. A little something. You know what I'm saying? You you text me recently. You said, yo, well, I'm in the lab. You know, I'm down six pounds. Like, that's the type of stuff that keeps us going, man. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, that story. Your family. Yes, sir. Talk to me about it. Who 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 are you anticipating coming out? Who we got? We already spoke about wifey. Wifey. So, the my two boys, they should, they should be coming. Uh, mom and dad said they want to come out. So, they haven't seen me play... Now, over, over a decade, yeah. so they've always been super supportive in, like, my basketball journey, so. How old are the boys? So, we got Jaden, he just turned 16, and then we got Logan, who's 13. What do you tell them about the event? Oh, that, that dad's about to play. So, they see me play when I was really, when they were really little. Yeah. So, when I actually was at Queensboro. Right. So, they don't really remember, and, um. My wife, she's seen me play, but she's from Brooklyn, so I didn't get no buckets. You right. know my game wasn't yeah. scoring a whole bunch, so she, you know, <laughs> a whole bunch of buckets is what she wants to see. So they uh, they know that I play. They still talk about basketball because I'm always watching it yeah. and I'm coaching. And, um, of course, I try to get them to play sports, but um, I never was the type to, like, force sports on them. Right. Definitely introduced it, and, you know, they like their own things. They like going on the computer, m- making apps, all different type of stuff, so... 16 and 13. Now they they are aware. They know what's about to go down. They can really see it. You know what I'm saying? They were babies back in the day. Um, Again, that's another element of what we're trying to do here at Masi Alumni Classic. Our families expand after we finish college. We get married. We have children. And this is an opportunity to see them play, uh, see your parents or your husband or your wife Play on that stage, man. So when you telling me these stories, it's just getting me hyped. Like, yo, this is why we do this. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got a 16 year old, Alan? Yeah. What? He's in 11th grade. What stage of your career did you have your first child? So funny story. Biologically, they're not my kids. Mm-hmm. So I've raised them since they the little one was one years old when I came around. So. Been raised. So probably 2011 when I met my wife, mm-hmm. uh, she had she had two boys. You know that was a part of like the relationship. And I always tell her I think I fell in love with the kids before her. Right. I've always I've always said that, and I, I'm super thankful for them. They're they're my boys. Like I don't even like you couldn't even tell that they weren't bi- biologically mine. Those, those are your boys. Those are my babies. And you met her while you were still playing. I met her I was at Queensboro. It was actually in that transition from Kingsboro to, to Queensboro. I was actually unsure about even like playing like playing basketball again. Because you had this young family. Not even that. It was just, you know, because I, I, I was a lot older than a lot of the guys that were on the team. Mm-hmm. I was at a four-year before I even came to Kingsboro. Where'd you start at? I was at Dominican College upstate. Oh. So I was trying to walk on there. Things weren't happening the way I wanted, and Kingsboro fell into my lap. Actually, through uh, David Lewis. Dave Lewis. He introduced me to Haas. You Long Island guys stick together. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. That, we're class of 06 together. That's what's up. I knew Dave since we was little kids. So I met I met her working together. And then um, we just built like a super strong bond and relationship. And, you know, years later, we're, we're still kicking. We're still here. What? What was your, your your favorite moment from your college career? Let's see. Favorite moment? Well, probably 
It was playing in the um probably the CUNY championship. Okay. Even though we didn't win it, we played against the Bronx. That just like it was a big we was at Hostos, yeah. big stage, everybody was there. Uh just knowing that potentially college coaches were like around. Uh we had a shot. We were we were right there with them, but like just that memory. Yeah. You know, even though I did play more when I was at Queensboro, I think I built like a little stronger relationships at Kingsboro. At like, Kingsboro. Yeah, yeah, just it was just a it was a whole we me and Tate brought that that attitude that we got from Kingsboro over there. To Queensboro. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, we try to we try to make it a family at Kingsboro. Uh what would you say is some of the I guess most important lessons you learned from your time at Kingsboro? Uh probably just dedication mm -hmm. and like sticking with your brothers, like Early in the season, we, we didn't have too much success, like, pretty early. Mm -hmm. You know, guys fell off and getting introduced to all that. It was, like, almost like a known thing that that 15 you got may not be at the end. Yeah. So the probably biggest lesson is, like, uh, like stick, like sticking with your family. Like, we really built, like, a, like a strong bond. That's good. That's good, man. With you, man, and Tay, Tay Washington, you guys were serious, man. I, I, I could respect that. I would just sit back from afar and watch. Like, oh, these young dudes want to be great. You know, and if that's the case, you could be around me, son. I, I can embrace you. You know what I mean? It, it's not about people's skill level or buckets. If you walk in this gym to work hard and be better, you my brother. You know what I'm saying? And that is why, you know, you've always been on my radar. You've always been on my radar. And I know... Your college career, you ne you didn't go on to play at a senior college after Queensboro. No, because I uh, it was the twelfth semester rule, mm -hmm. so that was the thing. I actually got recruited by CCNY. Okay, they uh, they wanted me and Tay to come play. We went on a campus visit and everything. But when we started breaking down like the credits and everything, I I reached that max of twelve semesters, and I already kind of knew that I was going like, to... Well, help us understand that. 12 semesters, your college career was up? Yeah, like, how does know, that work? I don't know if that's still like a rule now, but if you're... Like, you're in school for 12 semesters, you kind of like forfeit the eligibility for like playing. Really? Yeah, and I, you know, I had no idea, but I knew that the clock was kind of ticking. So that last year, I kind of like gave it all I could. You know, I made all region sports, sportsmanship team, so which was like a good accomplishment. But, um, were you disappointed by this news that you couldn't go on to the senior college? A hundred percent. It was uh, disappointing, but then also having the family, it knew like something had to give at some point. Right. So, you know, it, it was disappointing because it was, you see their gym, they got the the big little jumbotron yeah. up top. It was like their jerseys were nice. I was like, wow, I get to finally play at a four year. But, you know, responsibilities, life comes. So it was like no regrets about it, 100%. Oh. I didn't know that part of your story. I thought you guys just kind of went on to be family men. I didn't know you were looking for other opportunities outside of junior college. Yeah, 100%. And even before then, when I was at Dominican trying to walk onto a D2, had an opportunity to go to Purchase, SUNY Purchase, but um, actually got academic dismissal from Dominican College. So the GPA was too low. Mm -hmm. So that's how I landed at Kingsboro. They had the rolling admission at the yeah. time. So, And I have like my best academic like year when I first got to Kingsboro. That's dope. I was, uh, it was an honors program. Like actually by accident, didn't even know about it. Had a 3.8 GPA, so. I didn't know all this was going on, but it makes sense because I've always classified you guys as fighters. Yeah. Always classified you guys as fighters. I remember you and Tay both used to work at that Nike in Long Island. Mm -hmm. Oceanside. And I'm like, look at the young homies. They got young families and they, they busting their ass to be great. Even away from the basketball court. You know, I, I don't know why I ended up going out to that ocean side. I think my man E used to live over there. We used to go get Nikes. And I seen y'all out there. I'm like, look at these brothers. Look at these brothers putting on for their family. You know what I'm saying? And I've always, again, I always tell people life is a resume. And when I see that, oh, them, them young boys, they, they, they putting on for their family, son. You know what I'm saying? Even though it may be uncomfortable, this and that, they making it work. They figuring it out. Have to. What was that time like at Nike after your college career was was over and you trying to find your way? 
So after school, like I had a lot of jobs. I worked in <laughs> restaurants, Nike. I even did Western Beef for a little bit, valet companies. Uh, I, I, I did it all. Just trying to figure it out. Like I've always worked. Even when I first got to college, I always worked. Even at Kingsborough, I was working at J.C. Penney in the shoe department. Where at? Uh, what was that? Queen Center Mall. Okay. So I was I was working there. I had to make a decision when the season came to either work or play. So I actually decided to play. But I've always worked, always tried to always try to hustle. Even now, you know, still just trying to figure it out. Yo, <laughs> that's the story of the D three junior college athlete. Hundred percent. Got to figure it out. Without the scholarship, you got to pay tuition. You got to do different things. If if you want to play ball. You got to figure it out. Maybe you got to work all summer, stack your little cheese, and then uh, take a break from your job in the fall so you can hope. Th these are the stories, man. Yeah, I used to use my little card from the restaurant. We used to get paid on the yeah. card. I used to use that to swipe to get Gatorades mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, So you used to just, used to just figure it out. Figure yeah. it out. And I didn't get that refund check everybody did. Yeah. Mom and dad made a little bit too much. So, yeah. yeah, figured it out. What was the most challenging part of that journey? Most challenging? Uh, just... Probably trying to get playing time, especially at Kingsborough. You know, it was a lot. That team was loaded, mm -hmm. loaded, and you know, having your brothers like you know vouch for you. They want you to play. They yeah. know you can play. I remember Zoe sometimes yelling at Haas to try to get me in the game. Yeah. But um, I knew my type of game. It wasn't going to score. It wasn't the mines was defense doing the nasty work. And sometimes you got to get spot minutes. So that was like hard to know how you put in a lot of work during the summer. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that you weren't getting the minutes, but you know we made it work. It was it was a it was a fun time. How I seen recognize the jump shot? Nah, you shoot that thing too. So when I, rest in peace, the Haas. <laughs> yeah, rest in peace. I actually funny thing after that, you know, I had, I was you know you you're upset like man I didn't get to play that much too. So I seen Haas years later at church. My in laws I used to go to their church yeah. out in on uh, Valley Stream, and I randomly seen them one day. And he, uh, he just just embraced, you know, that big teddy bear yeah. hug that he gives you. And it was just like, it was a good moment to like just put everything behind. Yeah. And just so that was the one moment I'm definitely, I definitely cherish. That's love. That's yeah. love. When you played at Queensboro, did you come back and give Kingsborough some buckets at all? Oh, yeah. We had a good, we, uh, so the first time they were loaded. Yeah. They had, before everybody uh, like left the team, they uh, they gave us the business that first time. But that second time around, they had like, it was like the TV game. Okay. It was like Queens Public uh, Channel. and uh, The CUNY got, Game of the Week. Mm -hmm, we definitely, we got, we got that win. Oh, yeah. Where did you guys play at? Queensboro or Kingsboro? We played Kingsboro first. And then the one that was on TV was... Uh, at Queensboro. At Queensboro. One of my favorite pictures that I always post was me and Rel. Rel's guarding me. Okay. Yeah. That's dope, man. That's dope. Um, what are you looking forward to on May 6th? What are you looking forward to seeing? Uh, actually, just uh, like everybody, just to kind of see like mm -hmm. from those different teams, like some of the senior college teams. It's pretty cool that we're playing against like a team that doesn't have a team anymore. Yeah. Like a legendary mm -hmm. team. So I remember seeing them, reading about them. So FIT. that's going to be, that's going to be awesome to play FIT because I know, I know a lot of them do still play. Oh so yeah. So that's going to, that's gonna be good too, and then seeing some of some of, some of the old guys, the Kingsborough guys. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. You talked about coaching. Where you at right now? Uh, I'm actually at my old high school, Elma Memorial High School. What are you doing there? Uh, assistant coach on varsity. All right, Elmont for WBH radio fans and supporters. Uh, our friend, frequent guest. Reg Gay is actually the JV coach over there. Yes, sir. Tell me about when you first linked up with Reg, man, when he first came on the scene. So, funny thing is, the varsity coach, he wanted me to be the JV coach. Mm -hmm. But I told him, I was like, it would be impossible. I'm stealing time even work, even even coaching during while I'm working. Yeah. So, I had to deny it. So, I seen Reg come in, and I'm looking through the window. I said, who's this young guy? <laughs> He's making these kids work, and it's in the summertime, and they the kids are engaged. I'm like, he's the one, he's the one for it. And just me and him, he's you super intense, but you got you gotta love that guy. He's family guy as well. Like got to meet his, meet his kids. Like yeah, he, he he's a great guy. I think in that position is gonna do so much for the kids at Elmont. 
Oh my! You you mentioned it's your alma mater. This is more than just a job. This is this is home. Yeah, that's home. That's that is home. I never thought I would be coaching at my my old high school. Never. How did the opportunity come about? Uh, just randomly talking with the coach. Um, he's uh, he took over for my coach. Mm -hmm. He during the pandemic he actually retired, George Hollow, and uh, so he took over for him and just you know talking, chopping it up. And I was like, hey, if you ever needed anything, I I'd be willing to help out. So one day he asked me. So I started coming to practice. I knew some of the kids already, building a relationship. And uh, last year was the first year, and we didn't have the best season. But then this year, we uh, we turned it around, made it to the semifinals of the county, uh, second in the conference. You know, hopefully getting a couple kids to school. One kid committed to Manhattanville. So, how's that feel? Yeah. Wearing, wearing your colors, working in your, uh, at your alma mater, and making a difference. Oh, uh, it's definitely a sense of pride. You know, walking in the hallway, I'm a custodian, but you got a million kids. Oh, coach. Hey, coach. Like, that's, you can't, you can't beat that. Like, and then my son goes to the school, so they're like, oh, that's Logan's dad. That's Logan. So it's, it, it's a good feeling. That's love. It's definitely a responsibility, too. You feel it, but it's, it's. Responsibility, why? Because eyes are on you? Yeah, eyes on you. And you feel a sense of responsibility to the kids. Yeah. You want to teach them more than basketball. You want to teach them about life. So that's. And you want to make sure you point them in the right direction. You know, I feel fortunate that I have coaches. I had coaches that taught me to gain the right way, but also learned some life lessons from them. What would the kids say about Coach Smith? Uh, they would say he's laid back, not the one that's really going to scream on him. But uh, he, he's, he's a cool guy. He's fun. He's super laid back, chill. But um, definitely going to point you in the right direction, 100%. Mm -hmm. And have, has your back, no matter what. I was going through your Instagram there's a picture of you standing next to two Spartan players. You got your uh, Elmont half zip up, and it's those eyes, son. Like, there's an intensity there. There's a, a, a quiet confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like, you say you are a laid back dude, but you can tell by your demeanor you mean business. You know what I'm saying? When I'm looking at that picture, I'm like, yo, that's my guy out right there. That, that picture right there solidifies, like, exactly who you are. Yeah, that's, like, probably one of my favorite, <laughs> my favorite pictures. Because uh, they're like, why are you looking directly at the camera? They didn't even know it was there. It was just, it was like the heat of the moment. I'm trying to rally. You know, you're trying to rally them. Like, you down late. You don't want them to break down. And I think I have a couple pictures, like, from me playing. Same look. Yeah. You know, even when I played football, they used to say they know the ball was coming because the eyes would get open and big. Yeah. But um, that's, that's just me. When I'm on the court, like, it, it, it brings out a different, a different type of person, for sure. When did you realize that uh, Reg was connected to me? So we were talking about, I forgot, we were talking about, like, where would you play? And then he was like, yeah, my man Will, he, I was like, I was like, you know Will Holly? Like, and I was like, that's just a small world. And then the, I seen the video, he had the LTG and, he, and you were yeah. interviewing him. I didn't know it was, like, like that connected. Such Yo. a small world. <laughs> Such a small world. Yo, May 6th, everybody in the building. Yes, sir. Reg is going to be in there for his man, Kayvon, of course. Now, you got the Spartan. Alan Smith, you got another game to pay attention to, man. And, and that's the beauty of my, uh, my city. We are all connected. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? How are we going to get them Spartans in there, man? I'm trying. I was talking to Reg actually about it. Um, I don't know if it's we going to maybe front and buy some, like front and buy some tickets for the kids. I got tickets for the kids. You get them there. Okay. With, let, I'll talk to them. We'll do it. And furthermore, your principal, remind me his name. Uh, Kevin Doherty. Reg got the job, or he was on the principal's radar because the principal's son plays yeah. LTG. Yes, sir. So I hope that the principal would be in there as well, cheering on Coach Baker. He, live, he lives right in Brooklyn. I, I, I know his son is going to be running around there somewhere. Gotta, I got to talk to him when we go to work on Tuesday. For sure, man. Like, we, we all connected. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to show the world how amazing our network is. Is man, um, how did Reg JV do this year? Oh, they did pretty good. I think they were definitely over five hundred. Uh, we uh, we're thinking about bringing maybe some of the kids up, but he he got bringing the, them up from yeah, from JV to varsity. Okay, there's a couple guys that we we think could be really good players, but he he he's developing them. He's changing their mindset. What's that conversation like between you and Reg and you guys going back and forth about the game and about the school, man? Take take us into that conversation. So whenever we're talking about it, it's it's a real conversation. Mm -hmm. we're, we're 
Like, he, he knows the game of basketball. And I love, like, just listening to him. Mm -hmm. He has this book with him at all times. He's always writing down plays that, I mean, like, super detailed, everything. It's, like, it's amazing to see. And that's something, like, that I want to adopt into into my everyday practice. But it's great talking to him. It, it almost feels like I've known him forever. Like, he was at Kingsboro when we played, mm -hmm. you know. And he, he always telling me about, like, Wingate. And, like, I learned a lot from him. Definitely. Do you tell him about what Elmont – of course. Used to be, yeah, because he definitely acts about I'm it. I'm sure. Reg is th that's why I appreciate him. Mm -hmm. Reg has no problem inquiring. Nope. So he uh, he definitely looks like he looked up like some like the old like footage and stuff like that of people that play. But um, I always I, I love talking about like like old Elmont like mm -hmm. times, especially like when I played because around that time we kind of we kind of got it started because Elmont was on like a little bit of a a little bit of a tear. You know, when in county, we got won a state championship in 2016. Yeah. So we definitely talk about it a lot. Like, Elmont's always had guys that could really play. But um, it's always like a narrative that they, after high school, not a lot of them really get to go places. But we got guys that play D1. We got guys. Why do you think that narrative started? What happened there? So that was even from when I was a kid. It was, uh, it was just, it was almost like there wasn't enough resources, it seemed like. But, uh, you know, guys fall into the trap of, you know, not wanting to do their schoolwork. Um, so they don't have the grades to go places. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely, it's definitely talent there. It's a little hotbed. It's just we got we to gotta contain them. What, time, what year did you finish there? Uh, 2006. Okay. So we had a decent year. Won our conference. Lost in county. It looks like I get a lot of support from the community, too. We do. We I seen some pictures, and there were some people in the stands. We do. Especially this year. Last year... You know, coming off of COVID mm -hmm. and all that thing, so getting everybody back into the stands and winning, winning helps everything. Yeah. So they come in. The parents they definitely support their kids. With you said there were some Elmont guys who were talented, but it seems after school they 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 didn't make the transition to the next level. I'm sh I'm sure that's an area you want to help to oh, solidify. Yeah, even from my year, a lot of the guys that actually made it, like they weren't like Jerome Alexander who played at John Jay. Yeah, Elmont. What? It was all off, like the bench didn't play. And he did work at John Jay. He went and tore up the CUNY. Yeah. Got got David, David Lewis. Then we got, um, who else we got? We got me. We got David Lewis. We got um, Demetrius Taylor, who played at Queensboro as well. Okay. Same time as Dave. We got, we got guys. We got Brian Hutchison, played D2 Malloy. You know, another guy, TJ, played at Malloy with him. So we got, we had, we had some guys. You had some guys, man. I'm excited for you. When I when I learned that all that was going on at Elmont, it's you, it's Reg Gay, it's a principal that is invested and excited about a sports program. Seems like y'all got what it takes to make things come, happen. And now we're bringing alumni back. We got the point guard from the, the state title team, Travis Morgan. He's on staff with us this year. Where? So we, we bringing him back. We got a guy that might be uh, get drafted, Casey and Defo, that was at uh, St. Peter's, then Seton Hall. So. He went to Elmont? Yeah, before he went to Lincoln. He's an Elmont kid. Reg was telling me there were some guys that yeah. careers may have started at Elmont or whatever, yeah. but didn't finish. A lot of them. Who else? Is Tobias Harris or not? No, he was at Half, Half Hollows. Who, who else w came through Elmont at some point? Let's see. Who we got that came through Elmont? So we got Casey and Defo that came through Elmont. Who just made the magical run with St. Peter's and then transferred to Seahawks? Hall? Who then else we got? Then we got a... He end, he's actually in the NFL. We got Greg Sinat. Mm -hmm. He went to Wagner. We got, a, we got a girl right now that's at Wagner. She's graduating. Uh, Zedaya Thibault. Her, her uh, brother actually played for us this year. So we um, it's your job to make sure they want to stay at Elma, huh? That's that's the biggest thing because they they pick. We lose guys to Holy Trinity back yeah. in the day. It was St. Mary's. We used to lose guys to, so St. Mary's was like the biggest of grabbing guys for the longest. But um, we got got we even though they go, we we got guys. Mm -hmm. We got guys. We just gotta put them in the right place. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. The the opportunity to build. Is is priceless, man. You know, sometimes guys look off and like, oh, there's a ready-made place here, there. Like Duke is what it is, cause Coach K made it that. 
Yes, sir. UCLA it is what it is because John Wooden made it that. So you got the opportunity. All you really need is resources and people behind you. Is it challenging? I'm sure. But it's going to be more rewarding than anything you ever did. You know what I'm saying? And for you to be able to do it at your alma mater, that's dope, man. Y'all got some nice uh, Spartan gear. I need one of them quarter zips. Oh, yeah. Coach Rob, he hooked us up this year. The nice white quarter zips. Yeah. Very nice. That's dope, man. I got to come out and check one of those games. And you guys do like double headers, JVs and Vars at times. Yes, sir. Get rocking in there. Yeah, most most of, the, most of them are double headers. Even mm -hmm. away game, double headers. That's mm -hmm. a lot of times they do it. Then we have some weekend games. Our coach did a great job with our non-conference this year. Mm -hmm. Played some tough teams. Played Campus Magnet. That was Coach Reg set that up. Oh, yeah. Coach Reg teaches there. And mm -hmm. y'all went in there and rolled over him, I think. JV did. Yeah. Varsity, we... It was a it was a it was a good game. It was close. They yeah. ended up edging us out, but um, that was out that small gym. Yeah. You know they got the orange lights, so that was. Hopefully, we could play them again this year. Was it uh, uh, different for the kids to see a PSAL atmosphere? Uh, definitely. They didn't really, you know, they have their confidence, but you could see it. Like it is, it's a whole different. It's a whole different ball game. Coming to the city, even though it ain't that far away. Whole a <laughs> but a lot of them, they knew the kids there. They yeah. grew up together, which is cool because Elmont is like the first town in Long Island. Yeah. So we're right there with Queens Village. So it was a uh, – hopefully we can get some more PSAL schools, get some some guys want to play us. Got to bring Wingate out there. Would love it. Even go to Wingate, whatever. Like yeah. Definitely talk to coach. We need – that exposure is good both ways. Yeah. Yeah. I was going through your Instagram. Man, you got a lot of things going on up there, man. That's, that's just me. I'm always trying to learn. Love reading. Always, like, cre creating stuff. Let's start with the brand you got on your hat and on your shirt. Yes, sir. Loner University. Man, talk to me. What, what, what's going on? So, Loner U, it's a, it's a brand I came up with. It was actually my cousin. He used to rap, so he... Uh, he said it in a song one time. So it always like clicked. I was like, we gotta gotta be able to do something with that some way, some He said Lona University? Yeah, and Lona You in the song. You remember the line? Uh what was the line? It was a uh, what was it? It was on his SoundCloud. It was a long <laughs> time, it was a long time ago. That's when everybody was fake rapping right. at the time. Even I tried it, realized it wasn't for me. Uh, you got some bars out there somewhere? Yeah, I hope they stay <laughs> hidden. I hope they stay hidden. <laughs> So, so Lonely You, it's a it's a clothing brand, but for, it's a it's a it's geared towards like mental health awareness. So that's where the loner in the you comes from. It's the loner inside you, and then loner in university, group of people. You know, as a loner, you feel alone. But we're trying to let people know that even though you're alone, there's a group of people who feel that same way. So you're technically not by yourself. Boom, yo, I. I've been waiting to ask you about that because, you know, loner always has this negative connotation. Yes, sir. Like, wh why would you want to be a loner? But you saying that those that feel alone, there's so many of you, so technically you're not alone. No, and just we just got to connect the dots. So, like, as the brand gets a little more, I definitely want to, like, bring people together. So a lot of the clothing, like, I make everything myself in-house. Like, this shirt, dyed it myself. The logo, I'm pressing it myself in the house. So, sweaters, hats, did the hat myself. You know, got a sewing machine, embroidery machine, just trying to, you know, learn different things. And it's more so, it's fun making the clothes. Yeah. It's not, right, especially now, it's not like for the profit. Of course, we love to, but it's just like the love of actually like making stuff. Like. Mm -hmm. Mental health advocacy. Why is that uh, something that is near and dear to your heart? Because I like just like everyone else, I definitely uh, have bouts of depression. Like especially being in sports, you know, and things not going the way you wanted. You know, getting academic dismissal. Like remembering that time, like that was probably like the lowest of low. You know, feeling like a disappointment. So what was happening there with the academics? Why? So I got better at basketball when I was at when I was at Dominican College. So I tried to walk on for almost about three years. And then by the last time, the coach was really, you know, liking me. I was going to do it, but my GPA wasn't high enough for it. So, like, dealing with that. And then I was in the gym probably more than in class at the time. So, I, like, coach said, I need you to get better at X, Y, Z. And I literally took it and ran with it. Mm -hmm. As soon as they finish with their game, I'm in the stands with my ball waiting. As soon as they leave, I'm in the gym working on my game. So, I got technically, I got better. 
but the grades weren't getting better. So. And that was a low point. Super low point. And then, you know, you have relationship issues at that time. Coupled with your school, you're like, it's a recipe for disaster. What was that feeling like? Take take us that loan of you. What was it like being, what was that feeling? So, and that and that goes back to having, like, I had a good good group of friends at the time. And they rallied around me and had me in the gym working on my game. So that's why I was even able to be good enough to have that Kingsborough look. But at that time, it was, you know, not wanting to get out of bed, sitting in the house. And then even when I went back to school at Kingsborough, when school was done, you're just there with your thoughts, mm-hmm. you know. So it was it was definitely a trying time, you know, definitely. So what are some things that help you to uh, climb out of that space? If if you ever do climb out, it's still a battle. Yeah, for sure. How, how do you help fight it and, and, and get out of that bed? It's uh, being honest about it. I think that's like the best thing. Just recognizing that you're in that space. Mm-hmm. Most people they kind of like try to hide it, but like, no, nah, it's all right. It's all right to say like I'm not good right now. It's okay to say like I'm not all right. And then if you have real ones around you, they'll rally work behind you, help pull you up. And then also having sports helped. You know, not being on a team at the time like hurt, but like being able to go in the gym, yeah. see yourself getting better. That naturally just helps bring you out because it's it's bringing confidence in yourself. Mm-hmm. Being being honest, is it with yourself or is there people you would reach out to? Or? I, I would uh, be honest with myself, but also reach out to people. And then I have a good relationship with my parents, so definitely being able to talk to them about it was also good, too. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it was, a lot of it is, is you. Like, once you're honest with yourself, you you can pull yourself out of anything. In, in the sports arena now, social media... Um, Everybody's um, social media is there, like their highlight reel. If you go through that thing, you think your life is the worst. Uh, yep. And I, I think it's impacting our children a lot. Do you feel that way, coaching at the the, the high school level? One hundred percent. You see it from what they actually post. Like sometimes they'll have like no pictures, but it'll be like a little highlight thing of themselves. And it's, I've said it for the longest time. This is back when Facebook. Like in my space was around, but like something sums up with this whole social media space, because a lot of times people they don't put like the bad things that are going on in their life or they're going through this. It's it is it's a highlight reel of yeah. like you said of their life, and even sometimes excuse me, I uh, I see stuff I post and I'm like man maybe I gotta put something that like like your real feeling. So I'm try to make sure I put that in every every post that I have. I mentioned that on the podcast before. These kids that have no picture, they they'll just have one little highlight reel, as if they that's what they want you to know about them. That's what they want you to to appear, son. That's not your whole life. Or they do the birthday post when they got their million dollar outfit on, yep. and that's it. And I'm like, dang, son, like those standards are unrealistic. We get out here, we try, we fail, and that's another thing I, with my city. A lot of guys. They're like, man, I don't want to get out there. You know, I got a reputation. Yeah. Bro, your reputation solidified. We know you older and things. Like, get out there and just play. Try and succeed and fail. Let the, inspire somebody. You know, I'm, let them see that. But, uh, Alan, with, with with high school sports so competitive, you know, you being a coach, do we have time to address a young athlete Going or, or having a, a mental struggle? I think it seems like we don't, but we do. And I think that's the beauty of having multiple coaches, mm-hmm. like on the team. Like, well, you could just pull them to the side and just, just check on their day. I think all coaches should know their players, like, on a mm-hmm. personal level. Because a lot of times they're there more with their coaches more than their family. Mm-hmm. Like I think but they're in school all day. Then they have practice for two, three hours. You know, sometimes, like, I, I try to do that. Try to every once in a while just, you know, check on them. You could, because having kids, you know when they're not okay. Mm-hmm. Like, my sons will always be like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll be like, I, kn- I literally know <laughs> everything about you. You're not okay. But so, you know, doing little check ins, I think we should have like a way or figure out time to just, you know, tap in with the mental health kids, you know, because we, we want them to succeed so much on the basketball court. You know, at times I think we do as coaches, we kind of forget that they're the kids at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. 
That is a battle, man. You know, you got a big game. You need people to perform, but they may not be there mentally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How do we... That's a, that's something I think about all the time. You know, helping to prepare them. It's not just physically, but mentally. You know, I, I want you to understand this is a big game, but you got to put it in perspective. It's just a game. It's just a game. Have fun with it. You know, I, I've celebrated championships. I've lost big games. Like... I, I, that's a struggle I think about every day, all day. You know, how to get somebody to that place. And I tell you, when I played college basketball, I came, I had just come out of the Army. I had literally just came out of a war zone. So that put everything in basketball in perspective for me. Wow. Yeah, man, this is, I didn't know that. Yeah. I had, um, right after high school, I went to the Army. I did four years. Um, that's And then I said, you know what? I'm going to try this basketball thing. Because I was always a park player. I never played high school basketball. So let me try this basketball thing, right? You know? And... I did it, you know, and um, had success, had success. I had success, you know, and I think back on my military experience. Like I literally came from Iraq where I carried an M16 every day. And if I got to go and practice and coaches yelling at me about running suicide, that's that's small time compared to real life. You know, I think that perspective helped me. And um, I don't know if that balance exists nowadays with the kids. Everything is sport, sport, sport. If I'm not a sport athlete. Nah, bro, go out there and try your hardest. That's the only thing I could ever guarantee when I walked in the gym, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you're concerned about something, put the work in, and you just live with the results. You know what I mean? But I see these guys so wound up tight behind this game, and I'm like, yo, bro, like you ain't even having fun anymore, son. Nope. We, we got to do something um, about that. Lonely you, when did you uh, put your first piece, or when did you first come up with the logo so a funny thing, first logo was actually right before everything shut down. Before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Right before everything shut down, I was just messing around at home. Came up with a logo. It wasn't even this. Mm -hmm. It was like Lonely University with like a wolf. It was a whole. It was a whole different thing. So when we were all home from the pandemic, it's just I got really got into reading. I got a whole collection of books. You know, started writing and then you know drawing out stuff. And then uh, reaching out for people to make logos, and then came up with this, came up with this logo, and another one I have is like a script logo, mm -hmm. and uh, actually got into hand embroidery during that time too. So just hand embroidery, a couple things, you know, a couple people bought them, and then just falling in love with just making clothes. Why'd you go with that logo? Why is that significant for you? So especially this one, it's a uh, actually it looks it's the old St. John's logo. I'm aware, yep. So that was like early 2000s, and that's when I was... I'm always a college basketball guy. Yeah. Even now, I don't even... I watch the NBA, but college is my thing. And St. John's was the that's, the... that's the home team right there. Every summer we played in a tournament at St. John's. Every summer. So, like, I was always around it. Mm -hmm. I was... Like, first, first uh, camp I ever went to was a Chris Mullen camp. Dope. In Island Garden. So, like, I've always had a love for St. John's. That's dope, man. That's dope. That's what caught my eye. The old St. John's, Red Storm, the cloud. I love it, man. And now that I learn more about the significance behind it, Lone You, I'm a part of Lone You. Yes, sir. For sure, man. That is amazing. I love to see people be creative. What type of books you reading, man? Uh, right now, I'm actually reading, it's pretty ironic, but I'm reading Malcolm X's book. Autobiography. Yes, sir. It's... I got, I got a little ways to go, but yeah. um, I'm reading that currently at the moment. Be careful. Your life is going to change. You feel it already. <laughs> <laughs> you feel it already. I was talking I was talking to my cousin about it. I'm like, I, I feel a little <laughs> different. I'm like, it it changes your whole perspective on a lot of things. But I, I just, I love reading. I love, like, grabbing knowledge. Like, my dad's a reader. Ever since I was little, he's always had a Tom Clancy book on him. Yeah. And... I never thought I would be the person sitting there reading, but I'm always trying to buy a book. Yeah. Same here, man. Uh, during the pandemic, I read a whole lot of books, whole lot of books. In fact, I read the autobiography of Malcolm X during the pandemic. Um, you say you feel different already. What are some things that have caught your attention uh, already? So probably right now, the thing that caught my attention was like his early life. Yeah. And then some of the things that like he went through that kind of, all to his perspective, and then 
when he when he came to New York and just the life he was living mm-hmm. at that time, like you could always see that up here, he he had it or he had it already. It's just uh, it took like a shift in going to prison, getting introduced to Islam that kind of really shifted his perspective and he put he put his foot on the gas. So that's like where I'm at with it right now. The My City Alumni Classic is heavily influenced by Malcolm X. I tell people the My City Alumni Classic is more about Malcolm X than it is Michael Jordan. A few things about Malcolm X. I think sometimes we look at these uh, these figures in history and we like, well, that's Dr. King. Like he was a civil rights leader. That was Malcolm X. Like he he was a celebrity. Like no, they were regular people that decided to make a difference. Hundred percent. I can't jump like Michael Jordan or LeBron James, but perhaps I can have the impact Dr. King or Malcolm X did. Like these were regular civilians and citizens who got tired of their community being mishandled, and they said, "I want to do something." Furthermore, with Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam. They give their energy to their people. I think a lot of times uh, we get caught up chasing celebrity. and this. My City Alumni Classic was looking to my left and my right and saying, I got stars right here. I got, I got all Americans. I got champions. I got fathers. I got husbands. I got entrepreneurs. I got teachers. I got real life heroes right here. And that's why I said, I'm going to tell their story. I don't care how many followers they got. And the city seemed to be paying attention. That's what that media rollout was last year. So what you play D3? You, you know what it is to get up every day and prepare. You know what it is to walk in the gym and teams try to stop you. You got stories. You coached. You, you did it. You All-American. You whatever. So I got that from Malcolm in the autobiography, uh, 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 his autobiography. Wow. I didn't know that. It's, it's us. This... It's not like, you know, again, my city. It's not about bragging rights. Yo, this is my city. It was really like an epiphany one day. Like, hold up. If I don't like anything that's going on in the city, it's my city. I could do something. I can make a change, yep. And I feel if all of us come to that same realization, we could take the city back. It's ours. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's where I'm at with it. Wow. That's... (laughs) I I didn't know that at all, but it makes sense. It all makes that makes sense. I want the people to see our power and who we are. That's about everybody. It's not just the players. It's our coaches. Our coaches who may have got dismissed prematurely from these institutions. We gonna celebrate them. Our parents that were with us and supported us on this journey. You know what I'm saying? Like. You know, when you go to the games and the parents start to form relationships yep. in the crowd, mm-hmm. I want to bring that back together. I want to, you know what I'm saying? It may be 10 years since your kids play, you haven't seen each other, come back, celebrate. That This event is for everybody, my community from a whole, not just the players. And I'm honestly getting frustrated by some of the players because they think it's all about them. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Will, what color jersey? Who we playing? Yo, bro, I, I got you, son. I need to tend to something else right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's building a community, like you said before when we were talking. Like, it, it literally is a community, and, like, I'm starting to see it a little more now. Yeah. Like, because that day, you, you don't know what type of relationship you're going to build. Mm-hmm. Somebody from another team, somebody in the stands you may, like like you said, mm-hmm. somebody you probably haven't seen in years mm-hmm. might be there. So Last year when we was watching the games, I was watching the crowd. I was watching. There was one little girl who was going crazy every time her mom played. Her mom was playing for Brooklyn. That's what makes it special to me. You know what I'm saying? I look forward to seeing your family out there. Um, I look forward to seeing them Spartans in there. I'm, I'm going to go see uh, your principal and say, your coach, what, what we, I mean, sir, what can we do to get this happening? You know what I'm saying? We definitely need that. I, I keep telling them about I'm, I'm sending it to them. Like, Yo, your, yeah. coach, your coach is playing. You want to come see me play? <laughs> they always want to play one-on-one. Come, come watch me. Come watch me play. Something else in your Instagram bio. Plant dad. Oh, yeah. My, my, wife, <laughs> my wife got me into gardening. So uh, we're always in the back growing stuff because she grows her own herbs. We're growing vegetables. Right now I'm growing avocado from the pit. Like, so I know how to do that. So it's Monstera became my favorite plant. So. And y'all eat this stuff, sell it? 
Yeah, we all we eat it like we grow jalapenos. We got kale in the backyard. She growing blueberries right now. We just planted stuff. I got radish, all kind of stuff. So we trying to yeah. This is something you picked up during the pandemic. Yep. Yep. Oh. What's sorry. What's it like when you see something go on the ground and then just sprout up? It's a you feel you feel good like and it reminds me of. Like my grandparents, my grandmother always, because they live right in St. Albans, but in their backyard, they growing up, thinking about it, they were always growing their own greens, snap peas. Like they were always growing. That's just like something our people have always done. Like we provide for ourselves, we provide for each other. It's something about something you grew and you're eating it yourself. For sure. And especially the way the world is now, it's a little scary. We don't know where yeah. things are coming from. Being able to take care of yourself, priceless. That's dope, son. That's dope. Speaking of Malcolm, and that's something the nation always talk about. Yo, growing your own, getting your own farmland and stuff. Are you a vegetarian or vegan? So every once in a while, I go, I do go vegan every once in a while. Mm -hmm. So I'll do like a couple months here, a couple months there, and like honestly, my body responds better to going like vegan mm -hmm. or vegetarian. So I might go back, but I like bacon too much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that Malcolm saying no, no to the bacon. I know. But. I'm, I'm, I'm in the book. I'm like, man, can I get that one thing? I said, I'll cover it. Let me get one thing. That's crazy, man. Uh, that's dope. Planting, bro. Yeah, Plant I, that. I do. Even photography. Like, I, my hands, my hat, I have different hats. Like, I just like creating in general. Ah, man. I tell you, I was just going through your IG. I said, yo, I want to talk to my boys, huh? Usually I'm a little bit more planned out with podcasts. Like, yo, I'm gonna talk to him next month when this. I was literally just sitting in my crib, going through your Instagram. I found Lonely and you. I saw the plan that I see. I, I just want to talk to my boys. I was gonna pick up the phone and call you. I said, nah. Matter of fact, we gonna turn the cameras on, and uh, we are going to do it, man. What high school basketball season's over? Where are you guys at now as far as coaches in the program? Like, what's going on this time? Where are we at? April, May? What? So, usually at this time, we kind of give them, like, a little break after the mm -hmm. season. But um, they've been wanting to get in the gym. So, since the end of the season, here and there, guys have been going in there. So, one the other assistant coach, Travis, he's been in there with them, getting workouts in. I've had him in there a couple, few times. So, like, a couple times out the week, they're getting it all every day, coach. Coach Al, we gym open, we get shots, we get shots because they know I work in the school, so mm -hmm. I can kind of get them in at any time. But you know how it goes in high school, certain gym time yeah. and stuff. But um, they're they're in there, they get they're in there, they're getting better. Some guys are starting with the AAU programs and things like that. We got one guy on um, LTG, Khalil. He's playing LTG right now. Which grade? So I think he's with the uh, is he with sixteen U? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's in tenth grade right now. Okay. So they're. They, you can tell they want to get better. They got, they kind of got the bug. We just, we're gonna see. Keep it going, man. Keep it going. What else is on your radar? You texted me the other day, said, "Yo, well, I can't wait to sit next to you and pick your brain." I said, "Yo, dog, this is not how this work." I asked the questions here on this podcast, man. What else you got going on over there, son? What you wanna know? What can I help you with? No, that's like I feel like we touched a lot of topics, a lot of topics, and I was thinking today on the way here. I remember the first time I actually met you. Mm -hmm. I was coming for a workout. It was probably like one of the first work workouts I had with uh, Kingsborough with Haas. David introduced me to him. Haas was like, come at six. Right. I was like, man, I got to get out of work. I was working at Social Security at the time. Mm -hmm. I had to leave work. I remember going to the Coliseum, grabbing a pair of sneakers. Wow. Still remember, white and red penny fours. Grabbed those, got it on the belt to make it there on time. That was the first time I met Tay. I met everybody was there. You had came. You was on your motorcycle. Oh, right. You had came after. You had the motorcycle. I was like, like who's this dude? He's <laughs> no joke. I could tell, but super cool. And like I just was thinking about that, remembering that, and I remember we actually scrimmaged you at York. Yes, yes. Yeah, Tony Vales. That's one of my favorite memories in my college career. People don't know that um, in the preseason you just scrimmaged different teams, and I was I had moved on to York at this time. And they put Kingsborough on the schedule. I went back to Kingsborough, played against the young homies. And it's funny because the first half, y'all were winning. 
And they say, yo, Will, what you want to do? Because in scrimmage, sometimes you reset the score. I said, nah, keep the score. We're going to play a full game. No way I'm letting these young boys beat me, son. <laughs> and fortunately, we were able to figure it out. But that was one of my fondest memories, man, being able to compete against you guys. Uh, I didn't know you met Tay at Kingsboro. I thought y'all was down since it's forever. Funny. So he's from Long Beach. And Tay's probably like two years younger than me. Mm -hmm. First time met him there. And we're we're going at it during the workouts or whatever because, you know, Long Island, like we yeah. we're both from Long Island. We're the only Long Island kids there, so we gotta we gotta make a name for ourselves. Yeah. But we actually we just clicked immediately. And to this day, like we're close. Like I'm the godfather to his kids. So he was in my wedding. That's you know, dope. That's 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 my that's my guy. That's dope. That's dope. Uh when the last time you seen Dave Lewis? Last time I saw he was like a social media star. So I haven't seen Dave in a couple of years, but I know he uh he like he drives like the, the big oil trucks now and everything like that. Like Really? Yeah. So I haven't seen him in a while, but every while on Instagram I hit him yeah. hit him up and things like that. But He's here in New York? No. Nah. He's on the West Coast. Yeah, I think he's Texas, I think. Oh, okay. I haven't I haven't seen him in such a long time. Like I've known Dave at elementary school. That's crazy. Yeah. He was a social media star for a minute. Yeah, for a little bit. Like, Funny. Right. Yeah, he's no. Whatever works. Whatever works. You read any of the books here I got posted on the wall? I was actually looking, trying to see if I read any of them. I'm so mad I still didn't get the Kobe mentality book. Kobe Mama mentality book is, is excellent. You know, Kobe's one of those athletes who, you know, people charge him with being very arrogant. But when you when you hear him speak, or in this case, you see him write, he can be critical of himself. He can he can be be honest, and in a way where it's like engaging. He'll talk to you about his strengths, but with the same passion and earnestness, he'll talk about his weaknesses. That's probably what makes him great. Yeah. So he he's a credible person that I want to listen to. And he goes to he goes through how he guarded some guys. He said earlier in his career, like KD gave him trouble, and then he found out certain things. And it's it's truly amazing to see one of the greatest be able to be so candid. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's one element a lot of the today's stars are are lacking. The Michael Jordan um documentary, what was that called? The Last Dance. The Last Dance, yep. He had all that footage, but he was able to sit in the chair. And engage us and hold our attention that way. A lot of these young kids and stuff uh, coming through the ranks, they don't want, they don't got the mouthpiece. That's part of the entertainment too. Yep. Not just saying uh, banal uh, quotes and saying um every other second. No, engage us. This is part of the show too. Michael Jordan sat in that chair and said, "Yo, da -da 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 -da. and I, I took it personally." <laughs> They were showing the stuff on the iPad, and he would react yeah. right away, like real time, like real time to it. It was that was great to see too. Yeah. Funny thing about Kobe growing up, I had his video game for sixty four. Kobe, Kobe Corsa, Kobe, Corsa, and I for the longest, like I was, I was an AI guy, mm -hmm. so I wasn't, a, I wasn't a Kobe guy. So with his passing, you started like even before he passed, like I was seeing like the dad, because being a dad, you're seeing the dad version of mm -hmm. him, and that's like. I was like, this is my favorite version of Kobe outside of basketball. Yeah. Like that type of person. So that was definitely uh I have one of his books. I have uh, one of his children books. Okay. The Wisenart series. I have one of those. I wasn't a Kobe guy either. I thought he was selfish, you know what I'm saying? But in his passing, I come to appreciate him more. Me and DA always talk about it, man. These these today's athletes make us miss Kobe. You know, just showing up for 82 games. Yeah. That being worth the price of admission, like that is something to appreciate him for. And uh, Phil Jackson wrote a few books. We got up there. What's that? Uh, Eleven. Eleven Rings. And he wrote the other one. I think it was called The Last Season, when he basically said Kobe was uncoachable. You know what I'm saying? But the man came in the league at 17. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You got you got to allow him time to mature and develop. And you, if you if you really are aware of the struggles for a black man, for him to survive. Like, salute to him. So I let all that stuff I had for him go. Even LeBron, I could be critical of him. But LeBron 
from Akron, no father, his mother. Like, if the worst you could say about him is he act like a baby sometime, it ain't all that bad, son. He did a lot, man. He did a lot. He did a lot, son. Like, if somebody handed me $90 million at 19, bro, I'd have been in trouble. I would have had to Rico or something, bro. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I make fun of these guys on the mic, but I, I salute all of them. But uh, the one book behind you, $40 Million Slaves, and Reg will tell you about that one. I definitely got to add that to the list. You got to add that to the list. Sure. Um, Bill Roden, the author, he raises the question, like, have we really advanced? You know, the, the money is getting bigger, but have we advanced as a people? Are, are we in the ownership chairs? Are we able to control our resources? And these are valid questions. You know, when I look at LeBron James, you you made all this money, you fought so hard to change your family's life, only to now we about to watch your son be controlled by these same forces. And that's really what my city is about also. I want you to see one of your own in this chair. We can control our resources. We don't have to wait for a school or an institution. We are capable of doing it. Now, we got to do a little work. We got to be responsible. We got to do a little promoting. But again, we don't we don't have anybody to blame. We can do it. So that book is very influential. And that's why I put some of this stuff on the wall. I want it to be, it to be not just about sports, but uh, academia, you know, the scholarship of sport. So that's where I'm at, man. Uh, what's the next few weeks going to be like for you? We're about 25 days from my city. Yeah, definitely uh, still in the gym. <laughs> you know, make sure, yeah, making sure I'm right. Got a little conditioning going. But, yeah, I, I'm actually having fun with getting back in shape. It's it's hard work, but it's fun. So that's going to be the next couple of weeks, continuing that, uh, continuing being the dad. Is it is it work by yourself? Like, are you or are you playing full court? Like, what are you doing? So I'm, I'm in the weight room by myself. Then I'm in the gym going through drills. Running up and down full cut off the like it's like when you were a kid again mm -hmm. working on your game winded, you know I'm checking my my calories on my Apple Watch. I got the other one. I'm you know I'm really trying to take it serious. So, What's the missus say about this this workout regimen? She's like, don't get hurt. Mm -hmm. That's like the biggest thing. But I think she's happy seeing that. She's always happy seeing me like doing something mm -hmm. I love to do. You know, cause we're like super supportive of each other. I'm super supportive of her business. So like she's happy to come to see to see me do it. Her big thing is I like, just don't get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Tell I have the ice ready. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna need it. <laughs> definitely gonna need it because you know us. We only know one way to only one speed. That's it, bro. No matter what, whatever age you are, once we step the, on the court, it's go time. Yeah, cause even if your body can't, you're like <laughs> no, like. <laughs> oh, uh, yo, bro. I want to say thank you, man. Uh, you inspire and motivate me. You know, with your stories, with your support. You know, we're going to try to go out there and be great and deliver for you and your families. I want it to be an experience. You know, the, the coolest things from last year after the, it was the text message that I was I would get from guys. Yo, well, son, that was crazy, yo. I ain't seen so-and-so. Yo, the, the, the day after last year's event, dudes was hitting me. Yo. I'm getting in, I'm joining three men's leagues. Next year, I'm going to be even better shape. I'm going to be even more ready. And that's what it's about, man. Yeah. Just trying to breathe life into our people, son. That's really what it's about. Yeah, that's, that's going to be, like seeing the photos from last year, like you could see the joy mm -hmm. in everybody's face. That, that was like the biggest thing. Because I always, pictures, I love taking them because like cause they speak a thousand words. It's like yeah. true. Like you could see the genuine joy in everybody's face from playing if it was like a crowd, like everybody's just so happy. We got to turn it out, man. Um, my God, man, I've always appreciated you. And uh, my my one last piece, I always get commended, especially by the women. I always get commended for the quality of individual I bring into this building, into this podcast. And even with when you go to my city, I want the youngsters to know that this isn't just because you played at Kingsboro. It's the man you've been since I met you. 
You know what I'm saying? You you said, yo, I remember when you pulled up on a motorcycle and stuff like, but yo, Holly was cool. He, he meant business, but he was cool. Like, your life is a resume, son, you know? And you aren't even my teammate. And treat everybody with respect. You know what I'm saying? And that's something you've always done. You always show love. I try to show love back. And <clears throat> that's what it's about, huh? You know what I mean? You'll never know who's going to be who down the line. Like, yo, just treat everybody with love. Be honorable. That's life right there. Honey. That's it. That's it, man. I'm too much preaching. Alan Smith. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, sir. Um, that's WBH Radio. I'm William Holly. We out.